back at WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. Yes, we still have a radio station. You can find us at AM 1570. Uh, yes, I've had some heavy thoughts on my mind, and I haven't shaved in a little while, but I'm so lucky to be blessed to have friends and confidants who sometimes don't shave either because they've been at college football games whooping it up with her kid all weekend long. Uh, Leonard Raskin joins us now on the eve of Ravens and Jets. Uh, of course, Raskin Global, following the American dream, doing things. But more than that, supporting me, our sponsorship, the things we do around here, and giving good advice. But more than that, trying to uh, show people how to have a little fun. You had a little fun this summer in Europe, right? Doing your yeah, thing there. Yeah. But this past weekend, your boy is a uh, is a real student at Ohio State. Hopefully, on the four year plan, not the five or the six year plan, right? Um, although Uncle Joe may give you ten grand. I don't know. We'll get into that later. You and me politically out of line. We could kid a be, be kid. It. You and I kid. We love each other. So, but I would say this: uh, you got to experience that football thing that when your kid walked into the school a couple years ago trying to make the pet band that we didn't have kids in the stands. I mean, no, I, nobody, I, we've nobody come a long there. way in one year when you consider where that Raiders game was last year, right? Absolutely. Nobody in the stadium. The shoe was empty to uh, Saturday night. The shoe, 100, 1066, 106,600. And that's, I think, the uh, paid attendance. So there were a bunch more than that. But Oh, you've you know, already you, paid putting the kid there, right? You're already absolutely. financing. Well, you know, I wish <laughs> you'd think you think you pay for your kid to go to school and, and you pay tuition and fees and, and all of that, that, that he'd be able to go to the football game for free. But no, not not at the Ohio State. Although I will say this, the boy gets uh, it's eight games. He's got tickets to all eight games. And it was, I think, 200 bucks. I was going to say, don't they do like a 20 and 20? 20, 200 bucks. Yeah, it's 200 bucks. Now, now he puts in, he puts in for his seats and he wants reserve. They have general admission where you can just go sit with all this crazy students. They also have reserve student sections and they get seated by class rank. And whether, you know, seniors get the best seats, then juniors, et cetera. He's a junior. He's getting there. He got first row seats oh. third in from the aisle first row in the end zone right next to the band ramp entrance he's loving it he was thrilled he's having a ball uh the wife and i drove out because we had to take the new puppy to see his big oh, brother look at this look at that's right you got a new dog is this where you're going to do the speech for help and be more humane like i do no, make me cry make no, me find my no, cat my no. cat's hungry right now i can find so her. so we dr- we drove out now now we drive out there it's seven hours you have to find the uh pet friendly hotel which i was quite shocked most of the hotels these days are pet friendly which is cool they got these little areas where you walk the little urchin they've got they've got uh the the, the doggy bags out there for you to you're clean like up a new after parent all over again right it's, it's crazy so we take the dog <laughs> out and and the boy had a friend uh come over that wasn't going to the game stay with the dog uh for a couple few hours while we were at the game so the dog wouldn't tear up his apartment and uh so we had doggy sitter uh, that was all arranged. You know what we're and... going to do? This is going to be a new thing, you and me, with the segment. I'm going to get a weight every week. We weigh the dog because the dog's oh going to go from like Nestor, 10 pounds to Nestor, 120. We picked, up, we picked up the dog on August 16th. He all was right. eight, eight and a half pounds. 18 now? At, at, at his 10-week vet checkup, 21 pounds. Ooh, the Raskins are feeding this guy well, Double. right? Double plus in three weeks. What it's do we crazy. name this uh, creature? The, the dog is Roland. 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 Okay. All right. Because Roland was a some crusader in the in the Christian Muslim French wars of God knows thousand some years ago. And my son, being a history major, medieval European studies major, as soon as we decided Great Pyrenees, well, this is where the dog is from. So the dog had to be Roland. So Roland is the dog's name, and I call him Roly. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab my Maryland lottery mug right here, Leonard Raskin, and I'm going to toast the great Roland Heeman and my friend Chef Rolando Key as well. I've I've known some good Rolands uh, as well. Uh, Leonard Raskin is here. He is Raskin (laughs) Global uh, doing this. So the game itself. The game was was great. The game was great. Uh, First half, Ohio State a little slow. Uh, Number one receiver got hurt. Jackson Smith and, and Jigba got hurt in the first quarter, first play of the game. So he didn't have his number one receiver. 
but they made up for it and ultimately won 21 to 10. Now, you and I have talked about this lots of times, gambling. I am not a gambler. Uh, I did think they would win the game. The spread, I do know these things, was 17 and a half. To they make did you not, laugh. They did not cover. Right. But they won by 11, as far as I'm concerned. You're playing Notre Dame, number five in the country at home. You win. Okay, you won. That's what matters. That's well, what the, the, the energy of the place is. It has a Ray, it has oh, a Ray Lewis crazy. thing, right? It's like it crazy. has that the way we used to do it here, right? Oh, it's insane. Well, if you've never been to an Ohio State football game, it's a sight to see. The, the, the band comes out. They do this whole fancy ramp entrance. The the drum major flips over, you know, his, bends his back over, touches his head to the ground. They do the script Ohio. Uh, they always do the opposing team's fight song and a little thing where they look like the opposing team's logo. So they played the Notre Dame fight song. Then the, the team comes out. The place goes crazy. Does, does, does all, the Notre Dame fight red. song get booed when the Ohio State fan plays it? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I figured they, it would. Well, yeah. But okay. they play it. They play every every team's fight song. They played game. Rush a couple years. They, they, they That's the halftime show. Right. Yeah. yeah so okay. this time they did a jazz halftime show, celebration of a hundred years in the shoe. They had the 2002 national championship team come back at halftime with uh, the head coach. They did a little a little Was that Troy, tribute. Troy Smith. Day? Uh, yeah, 2002. Okay, okay. okay go ahead. And then, and then into the third quarter, they had the Lady Bucks, the, the NCAA champion hockey team from last year. Okay. Came out and got, got a little standing O. And uh, are you familiar? I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, Timmy Trumpet Narco. Are you familiar with that song? No. No? I know Hang On Sloopy. No, no, no. Timmy Trumpet uh, Narco is like this new hip I mean, Wild I know it. Song. Don't know the name. Don't don't embarrass me on music. It's, but no, yes, no, no, I'll it's do okay. It. It's it's the uh, it's the song that the Jets, that the Jets, the Mets, Mets. Uh, oh Ozer yeah, yeah. Comes out. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. I, I okay, got it. I the didn't know Trump the name. Trumpet dude, the wah yeah, wah wah wah. Okay, so, okay. so beginning of the fourth quarter, they had a uh, gal from the band that plays trumpet play that with the song. It was incredible. She was outstanding. So nice. the, the place is you're just speaking places. so glowingly at a great time, right? It's place is happening. Penny, right? It's rocking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, our tickets weren't twenty bucks, but it's no. Okay. But I mean, like from a, from an experiential standpoint. Oh, it's a blast! Kid. It's Big Ten football against Notre Dame opening night. I mean, ESPN if your kid would have gone to Towson State, you wouldn't be doing this. So that's you know, there's I'd a be going to that, watch something, I guess. Well, well I you know. talk American Dream and saving money. Let Absolutely. Rest this year. Absolutely. All right, so look, we save our nickels this week, and uh, yes. it's Jets, Ravens. Yes. Start the season. Is it Flacco? Is it Flacco? Yeah, I guess it'll be. I mean, I, I heard know. some rumor that their starting quarterback is is working out, playing. Well, but, yeah, okay. Is, is is that official? I'm 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 waiting for everything to become. And once it's official, do I? I I, I had some of the New York writers, and I'm like. Let's talk about both of the quarterbacks because, you know, like, let's right. be honest. It, it's it's a game of uh, it, it's gamesmanship at this point. Absolutely. It's going to be Joe Flacco. <laughs> right. The only thing the only thing better than Joe Flacco uh, playing against Lamar is it would be in Baltimore and Joe could get a welcome home uh, loss. But but he'll take the loss in the ghetto lands just the same. Well, hey man, listen, I, I don't know what to expect from our team or their team. I think that that's one of the things this week in talking to anybody about football, whether they're experts inside. I had John McClain on, who's covered the Houston teams and the Tennessee teams for years and years. I had Bob Glover on talking Jets this week. I, I don't know that we really. I've had people talk down about the Bengals, right? I've had people talk yeah. up and down about the Steelers. I've had people say the West is going to be the greatest division ever. I'm not convinced Russell Wilson's going to like make a huge difference. So, so we all have an opinion at this point. I don't know that it's based but, on anything other than a weird perception. But it's, I don't it's think based we've seen on the fact the perception or, or it's based, based on the fact that they're the Jets. <laughs> right, it's perception. <laughs> it's not reality, right? We got no Joe. We got no Joe Namath up there. We got no guarantee going on. We got the hapless Jets. They're the Jets. How can you not beat them by seven? 
right? Right. Is that the spread? See, that is a go. seven. Yeah. The, yeah so, well, not, and on the road, on the road by seven. Uh, but I don't gotta, know the confidence level I have because I don't really know anything about the Jets. I mean, and I honestly, I'm a Ravens expert and like all of that stuff. On some quarters, I'm not, but I, I am. I, I haven't seen this team play. I, I, no, I, I, I have haven't a lot seen of Lamar questions. step on the field. Look, man, Luke and I sit here all day long and talk about this, about their linebacking core, about their wide receiving core, about who's going to play offensive line, about where they are with Ronnie Stanley, about yep, Nick yep. Boyle's role in this. Who's, getting running, who's the back. running back? Who's the running back? Yeah, your guy, Red, uh, you know, like uh, the Ohio State guy. So, J.K. Uh, Dobbins playing? I met Dobbins. I say, I say Reddick all the time. It's stupid. I, it's, That's it's all right. Is Dobbins brain. playing? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I would say this for the Ravens. Their perception leads them to a seven-point favorite. I don't know. It's, that's Lamar, and that's Mark Andrews, and yeah. that's a reputation of defense. That, that's right. Yeah, new coordinator, right? I mean, there's all sorts of guys who are a year older who were old last year. Houston, uh, Campbell, right? Guys were injured last year. Uh, 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 Peter, I, say, right? I say if we're healthy and the starters play, we win by more than seven. I say if we're not who we think we were on the field, anybody's guess. You know, who knows who's going to show up? You've been watching baseball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. has yeah. been quite a month, right? Like, wow. th- th- this is something we weren't expecting to be talking about. You, If you would have told me, dude, back in April, you and I having a crab cake at it, I don't know, where Nick's up at Grandstand Grill. If, if you would have said, hey, man, I'll bet you, you know, f- free lunch that in September, the week, that will be, be Joe Flacco yep. in, in the Meadowlands. And, but yep. we'll be talking about baseball because the Orioles will be in a hey. pennant race playing the Blue Jays. Like, I yeah, never right. could have believed that. And right? they'd, be, like, they'd be fighting the Blue Jays over yakking with the dugout. How about that? Rolling Ooh. already. The feisty I like young it. birds. I like it. I like it. Sick of being kicked around. Hey, look. As we this, say in my neighborhood, take, number? take in no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think I, I think I saw we have we have more home wins this year than the last two seasons combined. Well, that's, I mean, there's no shock when you're that bad. How great, that were, how great is that, right? though? Look, I, I, have a, I have a friend. I don't know if we talked about this or not. Who is a gambler? You know, we've talked about that we're not. He is. It, it's like sport. It's like a, a fun thing. He, he's got it all. It's, it's his world. And we, we hung out right after opening day. And he goes – Hey, I put 500 bucks on the over under for the O's win total. I said, what'd you, what'd you pay? He said, 63. I took the over. I said, dude, I don't know. He goes, I feel pretty good. So we talked a week or so ago, they were at 60. He goes, I feel really good. <laughs> I said, I'll bet you do. Now they're what, 70? And- Has he cashed it? Did he go day 64? Yeah, yeah, get a of course. Line or, yeah, absolutely. Right, okay. Absolutely. It's like time to. Time to cash the check. I said, See, damn. You know, that's if, the kind if, of wager. You had that fun, much right? confidence. You had that much confidence, man. Why not five grand? He goes, well, I didn't have that much confidence. Look, I can <laughs> hold up my lottery tickets and stuff. And, you know, lottery, some of the games are instant. Some of them yep. are long-term. People like to bet a, a, a football game, go down to the casino this weekend for the first time ever, bet a game, sit there for three hours, got 10 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever they got on, yeah, and have yeah. fun with it. Some people like blackjack. They want to play a hand. They want to gamble every two minutes. Right. Some people just want right. to pull a, pull a knob and have a new game every 30 seconds. Uh, there is something about the long play sports wise to say i know something right like and i don't know anything about the ravens or the jets this year but on reputation if you're going to give me the ravens at nine and a half over under i'll bet the over you know what i mean yeah. if you're going to give it to me at 11 you make it a much harder bet for me and i That's do right. know something about it in that way that if i bet i, I said to my wife in the off season i should get a sponsor for this or get a casino i should bet mythical money right i should have a casino bank that's right like 10 grand and that's on right. week one i decide to put 500 on this 300 on that 200 mythical money or whatever money i make for charity right make for mount washington yep. Pediatric, yep. right but that there would be a fun idea in season to do that with a bankroll to see if I could be any good at it. Just focusing on games over under, you could bet all sorts of things, but I think the long play of yep. will the Ravens make the playoffs. That's something that if I was in a casino and I really cared to bet a hundred dollars yep. or 50, because I, I just don't, it's just not my Jones. You know what I mean? It's yeah, really but if you'd have taken, and I don't know the numbers again, I don't know the numbers, but if you'd have taken at the beginning of the season, since the over under was 63, 
My guess is the odds were pretty long on the O's making the playoffs. No, you I mean, dropped a hundred bucks on that. And yeah, man, Orioles making the playoffs had to have been 25 to one, right? Yeah, like, I would say it was even longer than that. I mean, who knows? Making, we yeah, making the playoffs is six teams. I mean, you know, just do the math on it. Yeah, right? but still, but, I mean, if it was, and you've dropped a hundred bucks, you'd be okay. If, if they well, pull I it mean, out, but listen, if it was a horse race, and there were yeah. 4, 15 horses in the race or, you know, whatever yep. in yep. the race. And you'd look at them and say, what would their odds be of finishing in the top six, not winning the race, just right. the top six. You, you, you would, you know, it, it would level it at, but this is what makes it fun. I would love to do a show on that. I mean, I am interested in that. I'm not necessarily interested in um, seven the and a half flip. over six and a baseball game, betting, starting, pitching. It's insane. Like, yeah, it's just not, I'm not a better like that, but no. I do like the proposition of how we discuss sports and whether the we long think term. the Ravens are going to be any good or not. Right. Right. Yeah, now, in the long term. It, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. In the long term. That's what so it's how many about. games are the Ravens going to win this year? This is a great, if we were betting, right now doing it but i'd say what's the number got to be for you to bet on it or over it and um i think the number is probably 10 10 and a half and 11 you know i'll, somewhere I'll in that take range, 10 right? i'll take 10 yeah i'll take the i'll take the over on 10 okay so you think they're gonna win 11 yeah yeah i'll take the over on 10 i'd definitely take the over on nine if somebody's giving me that it's all pedigree though isn't it absolutely we don't know anything <laughs> like you said we we know nothing we're, we're living on hopes every Every year before the season starts, everybody's going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> everybody's zero and zero going to the Super Bowl. That's why they play. So now we get to watch. I'm ready to write Purple uh, Rain 3, Leonard. Leonard Raskin is here. There we go. Raskin. I want to give you a little oxygen here because every week you, you always have some wisdom or some uh, financial or things that happen. And uh, I like a little pearl. But more than that, there, there's a real life story you usually try to put behind it and say, hey, man. This really happened in my place last month. Let me tell you, I got to warn you because it, it, you don't want it to happen again. Yeah, good good question. So so I would say in the most recent past, we've got situations where, uh, and we've had this before, and undoubtedly, unfortunately, we'll have it again, beneficiaries of insurance, retirement accounts, investment accounts are not quite coordinated with the will. So you die, somebody died, and they had wishes in their will of what they wanted to have happen. So you don't even need to be Peter Angelos and John, and you don't have to have no, billions of dollars right. to fight over. That's you exactly could fight over a hundred dollar right. television, literally. And it's it's so, and it's sometimes the good news is it's not a fight; it's just a mess. So we say this is who I want to get some money, and then this is who I want to get some other money, and then this is who I want to get the rest. And so that's what you put in your will. And what you have to understand is your life insurance your retirement accounts with beneficiaries, your investment accounts, if you designate a beneficiary, bank accounts, if you designate a beneficiary, all go outside of the will. So they go according to the beneficiary designations. So if the beneficiary designation says the 50% goes to kid A and 50% goes to kid B, and that's where it goes, but yet in the will, I said, I want some money to go to the grandkids and I want some money to go to some charities, and some other things, well, those wishes don't happen. So what you wanted to have happen doesn't happen unless you make and it's it so a little and macabre, everything. right, to sit down and write That's down, right. like, who's going to get my Boston belt buckle, uh, you know, That's like, right. when it's over with, you know. That's right. But if you, don't, if you don't do that, it's up to the court to decide or the state decides. So you do. You put it in a Or in then a my kid has a, to give it away, agenda. right, and figure That's out right. who gets it, you know. That's right. And so the executor is now tasked with, how do I carry out the wishes in the will if what was wished can't be done by designation of the money? So you think, well, it's okay. They can just, the beneficiaries that got the money can just take it and give it to the people that the, the deceased wanted it to go to. They can just do that. And they can, but there's ramifications to that. There may be tax consequences you don't like. There may be gift tax consequences and filings that you don't want to do. It could be that one beneficiary, A, wants to honor the wishes. Beneficiary, B, doesn't. So you say, well, we would have honored these wishes 50-50, but one of you doesn't want to. So now, if I want to honor the deceased wishes, it's all got to come from me because beneficiary, B, doesn't want to play. So what happens if that happens? Do I honor half the wish? Do I not honor the wish? Do I get angry at 
beneficiary B for not wanting to honor the wish. You know, these are all the things that happen and they've happened. Another situation, which is even worse. So this is all within the last 60 days of our life. Another situation is unbeknownst to the uh, soon to be deceased, unbeknownst to the soon to be deceased, one of the beneficiaries owes a significant debt to the Internal Revenue Service. Mm. Tax is not paid over time. Okay? Does not inform. Wow, this is sticky. Deceased. I need popcorn for this, Leonard. I'm there thinking about this, right? Because I go. just, my stomach just dropped to, oh no, right? Right. Like, literally. So now deceased, deceased occurs. Okay, the, the, the person passes. The will designates and the beneficiaries designate that beneficiary gets a bunch of money. So beneficiary says, I'd like my money, please. And we say, fine, as long as you sign this form, it's not our form, it's a government form. Government form says, you don't owe the IRS any money because in order for the financial institution to release the money, they have to certify that you don't owe the IRS any money. Because if you owe the IRS money, they got to send it to the IRS. Well, you can't sign that form. At least it says on the form under penalty of perjury, federal law, so if you sign the form, you're lying. So what if you don't sign the form? Well, then you can't get the money because your money is going to go first to pay off your debt to the IRS. Now, had... Like a lot of the tickets you can't cash sort of kind of a little bit, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. If pre-deceased, we had known that this was the situation, we could have arranged for the money to be distributed in such a way that it would have been protected from the IRS and available to the said beneficiary. But we didn't know. So we couldn't do anything about it until we find out, oh no, what now? So now we have to figure out how to make things happen and it's really bad. So this goes to the no talk rule that you know, is usually when we're little kids, but it goes on forever. You know, I could be 75, 80 and not talk to my kids that are 50 about our money and my estate. And then I die and we find out one of the kids owed the IRS. It's too late. So you say, well, often parents don't talk to their kids about money because it's kind of a weird thing that the people have. They don't want their kids to know how much they have or don't have. They're embarrassed by what they don't have. They're embarrassed by what they have. They don't want the kids to become, what was it, the Menendez boys, knock them off you know, for the money. We don't want that happening. So we don't talk about it. Or we were just raised in a place where we don't talk about money. You know, we don't talk about how much we make. We don't talk about what we have. Well, in this case, it was the opposite. It was child beneficiary not talking to parent, you know, not soon, but over a period of time. About the situation, right. About yeah. saying, hey, don't leave me money. Let's talk about if you're going to leave me any money. You know, none of us are getting any healthier. And if something happens to you, this is my situation for whatever reason. And so beneficiary is now sitting. That's an incredible study. I just never, it's never occurred to me. You, you know right. what I mean? Now that right. you played it out in my mind, it's really an incredible thing and, and very not likely, but certainly possible. I mean, no doubt That's about right. that, right? Yeah. That's right. Which is why one of the things we encourage, we talk about the American dream. One of the things we encourage is the American meeting, the family meeting where we sit down with the parents, the kids, the lawyer, the accountant, us all in a room and we lay out on the table what is now you don't do this when your kids are 10 but you start doing it at some point and you bring the kids along and they understand what's going on the complexity or simplicity of it well the, the so day you die as the parent you leave your kids the kids are freaked out to begin with this is one thing right. that at least is clarified right that's right ahead of that's time right. because anything can happen to any of us at any point we know that right that's right and we don't like to acknowledge this, that. We don't talk about it. But it, that's the first – that's level one when they come in and see you. They're, you're a nice guy. You're tenderhearted, even though you're Republican. But the one thing that they should know about you coming in is, hey, man, we have to talk about what happened. Like, we, we have – That's right. We, this is, we're going to have tough conversations you come see exactly. me. Because it's, exactly. Because this is not easy, right? No, it's real. It's real. And and it's going to happen. And well, here's what I'll tell you. I've appreciated about you. You know what I mean? In Thank that you. way. Literally. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you in my experience – Here's what I know. People that have sickness, illness, your wife, her situation. Okay. I don't know. We, we weren't working together then, but I can tell you this. People that are in that moment 
of facing their mortality want to come in and have that meeting with their family to make sure everybody knows what's going on. It's the ones that it happens like that, that those meetings maybe didn't happen because they didn't think it was going to happen that soon. But when you start to realize that either mom or dad are in, in an assisted living or, you know, whatever point mom and dad's health is starting to go downhill a little bit, we need the kids to be involved. We need to know what's going on. But we encourage those family meetings from early, early on that the kids know what's happening. We, we don't want to meet the beneficiaries, the executor and the trustees at the funeral. You know, we, we want to know the, the parties at at benefit and at work before then. And when we can do that, everybody's in a better position when somebody passes to make sure I's were dotted, T's were crossed and things are received appropriately. And, and it's a big deal and most people don't do it. So if you have an insurance agent or you have a stockbroker or you have quote unquote a financial advisor and you haven't had this meeting, then you, you better pick up the phone or send an email to your team and say, we, we need to get together and we need to have a family meeting and figure out just what's going to be what so everybody knows. Just That's so everybody back to knows. school message there. I love that, right? That's exactly right. It's time to do that, that family checkup. And, you know, look, if if you're going to tell your kids, hey, you know, I went to the doctor and they just diagnosed me with blah, whatever that is, Been there. then, you, yeah. then you also have to be willing to sit down and have the meeting with your family, with your kids and say, look, this is our will. We don't have to tell them how much is coming, but but they need to know this is what's happening. This is what I have. These are the people that matter. Here's the attorney. Here's the the advisor. Here's who you call if something happens. Here's where my statements are kept. You don't have a notebook on the on the bookshelf or they're in the computer room on a disc or whatever it is. You know, see this this thumb drive or or here's my here's where you get my passwords. And oh, by the way, in the cloud is all my information for my financials. You just need to know that because when it happens, I mean, I, I had a case. This is years ago. I can tell you this four kids. They inherited half a million plus each when dad passed. Two of them knew because they were involved with his financials. The other two had no idea. And they were blown away and stunned and overwhelmed at what came. And, you know, that's it. Both are OK, but somebody needs to know. And right. so some one somebody's got to be the designated. A lot of families don't stuff. communicate well to begin with. Right. That's an American crisis. You know, and certainly all. money just adds another layer to we don't talk about it. Right. right. <laughs> hey, uh, Leonard exactly Raskin's right. here. You can find him at Raskin Global. I'm wearing the shirt. Uh, he's always here for good advice and uh, uh, sound and fun conversation. Sometimes even a crab cake. Maryland Crab Cake Tour is getting back out on the road uh, next Friday at Union Brewing in the local oyster. I'm looking forward to that uh, immensely. I like Adam a lot over there. He makes great beers. Uh, I'm looking to uh, celebrate his uh, his uh, grandfather's life in Zadie's Lager. So we're doing that uh, over a beer and a crab cake. Uh, that's before the Dolphins game. Meantime, uh, getting myself straight, doing some writing. Hope everybody's been reading. Uh, my work's at Baltimore Positive. And certainly, if you need uh, just a good head on your shoulders and financial advice, or certainly some good advice, you can always go to RaskinGlobal.com. Click away. There's a lot of information up there. And you can always reach the lender and find him out at Baltimore Positive. Hey, man, next time you and I get together, uh, the Ravens are going to be in season. There's going to be good news, bad news. I mean, this is when the roller gets the roller coaster ride, right? This is when Here the fun go. begins, right? Here we go. That's right. That's exactly right. Want to know? Want to know? Next week, we'll find out. Nothing better than football season, man. I am Nestor. We are WNSD AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking Baltimore. Positive.